Hi, you guys. How are you doing? I hope you guys are all doing well and you're keeping safe and healthy right now. We have a very interesting discussion and hopefully a very useful discussion, especially for those of you who have been laid off or lost your jobs during the pandemic or who have lost your source of income. So we brought together um, a group of, of expert panelists in the human resources field, as well as some very seasoned uh, freelancers, and they will give, be giving you some tips and guidance on what industries are hiring right now and how you can better your chances to get that next employment or even that freelance gig. So please do stick around and join us here at Illustrata Talks when we discuss finding jobs during the COVID-19 pandemic. Hello again, I'm Lelaine Chubinitas, Editor-in-Chief here at Illustrado Magazine, and joining me as usual is our Features Editor. Hey, Alwi. Yeah, it's me again, and working remotely every, and yeah, Lelaine, you're in Russell Kaima now, right? Yes, Russell Kaima and uh, Dubai represent. How yes. are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Um, I'm very excited about this um, live because it's sad that a lot of Filipinos and Arkhamabayans out there have lost um, their jobs or have been having a hard time in terms of employment. But I think this live will be able to offer a brighter perspective to them and also maybe consider which industries and other employment opportunities are out there, given by, of course, our panelists and our experts. Yeah. And right, of course, as we say in the Filipino community, laban lang, right? So it's time to rise up. There's no... Uh, don't spend your time getting depressed or anything. It's so easy to sink into that feeling. But today we rise up, you know, we find out how we can make our situation better and we have the right people to help us. But before we go there, Ali, we would like to say thanks to our sponsors who have always supported Illustrado. Mm -hmm. Let's rise. Let's conquer fear with our smiles, in isolation with our cheers. Let's beat gloom with applause. Come on, strangers, neighbors, peers. This is not the world we know. Doubts and worries inside us crawl. Let's rise, rise, rise. Together, we'll conquer all. Sure, we cannot see the enemy, but it cannot see our weapons. Spirit, strength, kindness, love. Our resolve's mighty. It won't be undone. Divided, we may stand today. United, we cannot fall. Let's rise, rise, rise. Together, we'll conquer all. Smarter, faster, bolder. Standing with the world shoulder to shoulder. Everyone belongs to us, to everyone we belong. We will keep rising, cause our roots are that strong. Dread is short lived, comes and goes. Real courage always lasts. 
Rise like the oceans for the selfless, the heroes, the brave hearts. Rise for everyone you love, even if you're apart. Let no barrier stop us, break down every wall. We will rise 11 times for the 10 times that we fall. Let's rise, 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 and together conquer all. So thank you once again to our friends in Giordano and Liali Jewelry. Of course, right now, Alwi, you can wear shorts at home even when you're doing, uh, <laughs> you know, Zoom calls because you can be decent on top and wear your shorts, right? But I'm wearing the full uh, outfit. Are we this the, is the excuse. I need to wear the full outfit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, our friends at Rogue Hotels. Rogue Hotels has an offer right now, and, you know, it's for long-term stays, and it's very, very uh, cost-effective for people who are looking for a place to stay for the long term. And of course, our friends at Radisson Hotel Dubai Derek Creek. Ali will tell us about their promotions. But before yeah, I um, give it... We have two very yeah. exciting things happening right now. First, um, this is good news also. And, and their way of saying thank you to the frontliners. Um, Radisson Blue Hotel Dubai Derek Creek is now offering 10 free staycations to our frontliners out there. All you need to do is uh, upload a photo of a frontliner that you know or you want to nominate and then share their story and then they can have um, a full day treat from Radisson Blue Hotel inclusive of breakfast and uh, dinner. And then wow, also yeah. they have offered um, their Korean restaurant to maybe yes, reopening on the 22nd of May. That's my mom's birthday. Uh -huh. um, yeah, they're reopening on the 22nd of May and there's an amazing offer. It's two for one, so it's buy one, take one for the Korean barbecue and uh, sushi, I think, sushi uh, buffet for only 199 inclusive of um, soft beverages. So if yeah, you want to know more about that offer, we're going to be um, putting that in the description of this slide. Yeah, and yeah, so thank you very much, Radisson Blue Dubai Dare Creek. And of course, our friends at ENBD. Wow, what a touching message, Ali. I just wanted to say that again. The hashtag is together we rise, you know. This is the time that all of us have to rise up and really help each other. So hopefully today's going to help you all, guys. And yeah, wherever you are, just say hi to us. If you have any questions, take this time to you know, interact with our experts and get as much information as you can so that you can find that next job or that next freelance gig. So we'd like to introduce our friends um, you know, with us here um, in, in today's live stream. First of all, all the way from Abu Dhabi, Jose Koska, who is a global talent acquisition expert with the Adnoc Group. He is also the ex-president of uh, SHRPA, or I, I'd like to call it Sherpa in the UAE, which is the Organization of Human Resources uh, Experts. And he was the one who has initiated the Filipino HR Summit. So he's doing a lot of good things out there in Abu Dhabi. 
I will say hi to him in a while. We also have the fabulous Maine Tamondong, who is a CIPD professional. And Maine is also a career coach. She is also a lecturer at the Philippine Business School, and she contributes to the People Management Middle East magazine. So what an amazing resource. Maine is the HR Global Projects and business partner at Equity Group. So we're so fortunate to have you. Hi, Jose, and hi, Maine. Hello, How are you guys hello. doing? Hi, hi, Elaine, uh, to all the viewers today. You guys mm -hmm. are working uh, from home also? Yes. yes, I'm on my lunch break right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, super. <laughs> so I think let, let's uh, ask the first question, Al. We, I think the most, uh, you know, one, one, um, one question that's in on top of people's minds right now is that are there companies still hiring? Because all around the globe, a lot of businesses or probably most of the businesses are down, right? Um, I, I've seen one feature in one of the international uh, media platforms, and they were saying that 50% of people do not know whether their jobs are coming back after all of this. But I think there's hope out there, right? Because the world is not closed for, for everybody. Not all in, uh, industries are closed. So which industries are hiring right now? Can I ask you, Jose, for, for your um, opinion on that? Of course, uh, Lelaine. Obviously, with the, with the current situation right now, um, positions related to medical, pharmaceutical related industries are definitely in demand, of course. But we are not just talking here about hospitals or medical services like um, doctors or nurses, but also support services related to the medical field, like, uh, you know, talking about ambulance drivers, company drivers, hospital attendants, clerks, cleaners, um, jobs related to health and safety. Um, we have seen also um, a lot of um, requirements that still exist on the IT industry, engineering, uh, automation, particularly for um, positions that are related to the cloud technology or automated platforms. And we have seen a lot of companies who are still into uh, uh, different projects uh, involved in this. Um, supply chain also has uh, a lot of um, still ongoing uh, requirements, uh, both in, in land and air, and we're pertaining to some uh, cargo deliveries of goods um, that are still, um, of course, required in order to move the goods here and there. Uh, well, food industry is not that much, but of course you're seeing uh, some restaurants that are partially closed, but uh, we have also seen uh, a lot of establishments looking for additional delivery staff, uh, one who can use the motorbike or who can drive. Uh, in our industry, the oil and gas, uh, while the price have gone down, we're continuously uh, looking for uh, project engineers, uh, discipline engineers, uh, technicians, operators who have relevant experiences um, in the plant operation. So um, these are mainly um, uh, some of the, uh, I could say, um, highly uh, in demand uh, jobs that are still existing until now. Maine, would you like to add to that? Yes. So um, first of all, thank you, Lalaine and Illustrated team for creating this ecosystem of support. We really need this at this point. And in fact, because of that, I feel like I need to share with you guys my screen because I've got a website where they have a live dashboard. Can you see that now? Um, mm -hmm. They have, uh, it's called Candor. So if you can Google Candor um, freeze hiring, um, they have a live dashboard with all of the industries that are currently on hiring freeze and layoffs. And um, there are also industries here that are still hiring. So the green ones are hiring, the red ones are laying off people and the ones in yellow are um, uh, freeze hiring. So if you can see here, it's not all doom and gloom, there's hope. So if you look at IT, for example, uh, they only have 4% of layoff. Uh, if you look at financial services, which I'm from the financial sector and in the brokerage, for example, FinTech, we are hiring because any movement um, in any stock market movement is good for us. Um, and then you can actually see the companies on here. What are the companies that are hiring too? In fact, uh, Jose, I've seen Adnoc is one of them. That, that it has been um, on this uh, website. So I think I encourage everyone to go and check out the website and target those companies and those industries that are hiring. Mm -hmm. 
I, I like that message because it doesn't, I mean, it looks very hopeful, right, Alwi? I'm, and it's not only for technical people, there are actually jobs across the board, right? And also, I think the beautiful, the, the, the good part of this is that even if you are in the UAE or wherever you are right now, since most companies um, implemented the work from home system, like you, you can also find jobs outside the place where you're at or the country you're at. For example, they're still writing um, gigs in the Philippines for freelance writers or, you know, like things like that. Or even the, in the IT industry, um, people who are doing search engine optimization for websites. Um, since these things you can do from home, like there are still available jobs. Like even if it's not a permanent job, like companies are also offering um, part-time jobs for, for people. Yeah, I like that because it, it's not really, like, like Main said, it's not only doom and gloom. There is hope out there and it just really depends on where you look. So you have, you have to widen your uh, perspective. You have to widen, you know, you have to cast a wider net, a bigger net out there. I'm going to ask the next question, but before we do that, Alwi, I know that we have some friends online right now and they're saying hi. Would you like to greet them? a lot of friends online, yeah. I, I would like to Super. take this Say hi to our Illustrator fans and our family also who, who are always hi guys. And, um, putting in their comments and their love and support whenever we go live. Um, hello to Don Almario, Fia Enahe, Ronald Awa, Josie Delphine from Radisson Blue is also watching, Ian Gonzaga, Chris Daimon, Juni Sarsano, Fred Chu, Art Popoy Los Banos is watching, Bench De La Rosa, um, Kevin Suezo, Jay De Leon, Roy Gabriel, Kevin Lestimosa, Kristin Abante is watching, Heiko DeSesto is also watching, Malpi Udena, Josie Conlu, um, Frostyle is also watching, Natasha Tarin, Marco Juan, Marlo Malinao, Faith Rodriguez, um, Joe Dark is also watching from Bulacan. So, wow. Uh, yeah. And I feel so good because I did not butcher the names today. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. But yeah, thank you guys for joining us. And yes, Virgil is saying that Illustrada shows us a better life. And, you know, that's that's what we hope to do. We hope to inspire you and motivate you to do better out there. And, uh, you know, since we're saying that there are jobs out there, Maine and Jose, what is your tip on how people should be uh, prospecting? How do they look? How do they get started? Do you have any tips for this? How do they look for these jobs? Uh, from, from, from our side, uh, uh, if I may add, um, actually we are also maintaining as an HR group, uh, some uh, Facebook um, uh, group uh, where you can uh, actually um, see a lot of jobs dedicated uh, for uh, Filipinos. And uh, it's, it's called the UAE Jobs for Kabayan, where we have, um, I think, roughly around 8,000 members right now. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, platforms where we actually post um, any position that uh, we, we may think uh, will, will suit for our Kababayan. So you can take a look at that. Now, um, in terms of um, basically looking at other uh, areas, of course, we are, we are all aware about uh, the current technologies. And um, when we take a look at the, the new technologies that we need to learn from now is, is uh, more uh, towards this uh, virtual uh, kind of uh, thing. So uh, you, you, you have, of course, MS Teams, WebEx, Zoom, um, and, and a lot of maybe other um, uh, available technologies that you can learn easily. Um, and some of them are, of course, free. Uh, but uh, learning the technology is just one part. I think what, the other part is um, basically how we can uh, improve or enhance further the other soft skills that we need in order to um, be successful in our uh, job hunting. Like we know for a fact right now that uh, job interviews are now done virtually. So uh, this is a very important part of how you're going to present yourself in a virtual interview. Uh, during the past two months, uh, we have conducted around 30, 40 virtual interviews and uh, you will encounter some candidates who did not even prepare themsel themselves well. Uh, like, you know, pagising nila, yung nila, you will even find some uh, people uh, 
na nagpapa-interview na kalat-kalat yung background nila, you know, may mga nakasampay. So, these are just uh, some some, you know, funny situations. But what we mean here is that um, you know, uh, you need to prepare well and and this technology will just give us a platform. So, you also need to prepare in terms of your communication, how you're going to present yourself in in a virtual interview. And um And this will be a very good indication that you are uh, uh, prepared, you know, or you have prepared well, and, and you're showing your uh, serious interest to the company that you're you're applying for. So apart from this, of course, you you need to enhance uh, maybe some presentation skills if it will be required uh, during the application process. So companies are looking for this kind of innovation, you know, how how creative you can be uh, in terms of, of um, you know. How you're you're presenting yourself in um, in uh, doing your interviews or uh, during the um, the uh, selection process uh, for the position that you're applying for. I think that's very important. That's a very good point, Jose. Right? Like simple things. Number one, dress up, present yourself well, and also, maglinis ka ng background. Or if you don't have like a nice background, at least like a plain wall. Right. Simple yeah. things. I mean, it's the impre- like. Again, like even if it's virtual, you need to make a good impression to Definitely. your uh, future employers, right? Let, let me just uh, you know uh, add another um, you know detail there. Um, yeah, Jose. Before I turn over to Maine, who I know has a lot of tips also for job seekers, Jose, maybe you can just you know detail a little bit more. What are you looking for in that job interview? How should a person fix themselves? Because sometimes what is obvious to us may not be obvious to other people, right? Like Alvi, you said you have to dress up and all that. I know for a fact, for example, when we were still based at the Dubai Media City, we had walk-in interviews and people were not even dressed up properly. So Jose, ano ang hinahanap ng mga employers? How should a Filipino, for example, present Uh, himself or herself during a Zoom interview. What are you looking for? Of course, Lalaine. Uh, other than the fact that uh, we are looking for um, the the hard skills or the technical skills as as required in the company, the the trend now is actually to focus more on the soft skills. And um, for most companies, um, actually, as I have already mentioned, uh, companies are looking. Uh, for people who can actually innovate and and um, you can bring in a lot of ideas especially now you're talking about saving costs so uh, you don't just come in, in in that interview with all your technical knowledge but you also have to prepare yourself with some ideas that you can bring uh, on the table that could actually save the company in terms of cost and this is one of the areas that that I like uh, that yeah actually looking for So like as HR, we are always asked by our company to be more creative and how we can actually engage employees uh, with, with the use of these uh, virtual tools and, uh, of course, at, at lesser cost uh, as much as possible. So uh, I guess that that's one of the, the major things that we need to, to take a look at now. So we don't just focus on our technical uh, skills or knowledge, but also what sort of uh, ideas we can, we can bring to um, have that business sustainability or even cost impact to the company. So this is what most uh, companies are actually looking for. Of course. I mean, I, I think especially right now and even post-COVID, uh, cost savings is such a big deal. So really professionals who are creative and who are resourceful and who can add more value to companies are really more valuable than uh, you know gen- than just the typical professional right can i ask main to pitch in main how about your tips for uh, you know nailing that job yeah sure um so i do work as a career coach and when i coach people the basic that i was teaching them before has now evolved to another thing a different being of workforce okay so i used to tell them okay sort out your cv Um, do a LinkedIn profile makeover, but that just doesn't cut it anymore. And so I, I want to start with also with something that I used to not teach or I, need, I used to not impart on uh, 
my clients, uh, if you may, it's a personal aspect of things, okay? So I know that there are a lot of uncertainties. I just want to acknowledge the fact that, yes, the coronavirus has changed a lot of things, and one of them is giving the, us this, this feeling of uncertainty. And what's the best way to combat uncertainty? It's control, okay? So I want everyone to think, what is in your power to control right now? Okay, so um, some of the things I can think of that they can control is uh, one of them is, is hold on to your stability rocks. Um, look at those things that are stable in your life. Um, the, even it's just as simple as waking up, the time of, that you wake up in the morning, what you do when you wake up in the morning, um, eat your meals, eat healthy meals, um, sleep the right time. Another thing that I also want people to, to be careful of is how much media you consume. Because, you know, there are so many negative news out there. And as you said earlier, we need to, um, we need to uh, limit our energy into productive things, right, right now. And so what you're doing when you're consuming a lot of these uh, negative, negative thoughts and negative facts, negative ideas, is you're adding unnecessary stress right? You're, you're adding a necessary cortisol in your system, which is a stress hormone, which is not good. And so lastly, um, it's the uh, wellness strategy as well. We all need to have a wellness strategy. Get moving, you know, do your exercise, eat well. It doesn't mean that um, you're working from home. It's just going to slack off on a lot of things, you know? So um, meditation, I personally uh, do meditation. I practice meditation um, almost every day, and it has helped me a lot. And there are a lot of plenty. Uh, there are plenty of um, free apps out there or on YouTube. Um, you know, look for free meditation. So um, I like the fact that Jose was talking about uh, agile employees because this is what companies need to be right now. We need agile executives to drive the companies to innovate. Um, so in addition to uh, what you were talking about on the um, agile employees, so the typical profile of agile employees are, you know, someone who has a penchant for learning, someone who has a growth mindset, um, you know, someone who is aware of their strengths and aware of the opportunities for improvement and are actually doing something about it or constantly training themselves. And, and uh, as recruiters, we can see that with all of the certificates, no matter how small they are that you've done, you know, put in your CV that you've done all these studies or even, um, uh, you know, internal training and development. Um, someone who's curious, you know, someone who's willing to innovate the same as the company who enjoys exploring new concepts. Um, you know, you know, there are someone who is not scared of challenging the status quo, someone who's a critical thinker, you know, someone who could uh, say, Right. I know that this is the process right now, but why is the process put together? And maybe um, there's a better way of doing things. And which takes me back to um, my next point, whereas someone who needs to have a communicate, good communication skills. So good mm -hmm. communication skills is no longer just being able to communicate thoughts or ideas. It's someone who has is is able to influence other people. Um, so one of the things I can think of right now is the art of diplomacy, which I've had to learn the hard way, for example. So if you are naturally curious, if you're a critical think thinker, and um, you see that there are things that just either don't make sense or you think of other things that, you know, uh, ways to improve uh, improve the way you do things, you have to articulate in such a way that is diplomatic. So you also don't, uh, you know, you also don't come across as a negative person. And you need to have a collaborative approach. Teamwork is needed more than ever. And in addition to teamwork, uh, you need to be empathetic, empathetic to the business, empathetic to your teammates, empathetic to what is going on around you. And uh, one last thing is you need to also be the change hardy, we call it, um, because right now a lot of change are happening. There are a lot of ambiguous things that are ongoing in this world where we are in right now. So you need to be able to adapt to that. Yeah, so that, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead, Ali. You guys are talking about like points of um, points that people need to consider when they're applying for a job, right? Um, but also, since a lot of uh, people now got laid off, there's a desperation in, in the air, the back. So, parang, sometimes parang Filipinos would go, parang, oh, I'll, I'm just going to send my CV to 
all the job openings, parang mass sent out of CVs. Tapos para, you, for sure you'd receive CVs also that are not related to the industry. Um, what's your tip for Filipinos? Yes. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question, Alwi. Uh, you need to be selective on where you apply and where you, you spend your energy on. Um, so if you know that your forte is, is this, then you apply to those uh, that are relevant to your skills. Unless you've been applying to those, unless you've been applying to um, uh, companies that where you know that you have experience on, on and you're not getting any anything back, then this is the time you, that you need to think about your other possible selves whereby, um, okay, fine, that I'm an accountant right now, I've been an accountant all my life, but I'm actually very good at, at, uh, I'm, at I'm a creative too. So you were just mentioning earlier about like remote work and that. So um, if you know that you're good at it, then fine, you could also think of that possible self of yours to be that creative if you're not finding jobs in within your forte. How long should this should the CV be? Like because sometimes like some CVs are like three pages. They put even their high school there. They yeah. put all the all the <laughs> um, studies and everything. everything. Sometimes yeah. they're not good. so what what is the type of CV that you recommend? Um, it's also a question for your husband. If you could put everything in a one pager document, that will be amazing or two pages at least. Um, also, the, a very good template that I find that is so, um, it's, it's my favorite template as a recruiter basically, is the INSEAD template. If you can Google INSEAD uh, CV template, um, that's, that's a really good one to use. But as I was saying earlier, um, CV won't just cut it. You also need to be your own PR firm mm. so to kind of promote yourself. Of course, because nobody will do it for you. You have to do it yourself. How about you, exactly. Jose? Like, what do you look for in a CV? Okay, uh, for the first question, I guess it is very important that um, we look for, uh, you try to look for your alternate passion. What I mean from this is that um, it is very important that um, um, if ever you won't be able to find a job that is uh, really uh, in line with uh, the kind of job that you really want, um, think of something that you would really enjoy. So uh, uh, it's not just about you know getting a job itself. Uh, of course, when when you're already uh, like uh, no choice, then uh, it's 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 but just uh, normal to get whatever is available job. But it's it's also very important that uh, uh, you really have that. Uh, passion uh, in, in terms of the job that you're, you're taking. And of course, you also have re relevant uh, abilities to deliver that kind of job. What is very important right now is that you don't um, uh, create any sort of big gap in your career because, um, of course, uh, most employers are also looking at that. And, and when they try to look at, you know, your uh, uh, career history, so that, that may be uh, some sort of a question why you were not able to uh, find a job for, for a long period. Now, in terms of the CV, I, um, uh, what I can say there is, um, you, know, you know, majority of the companies now are highly automated. So it's actually uh, something that uh, most people even don't have to worry about the kind of um, uh, template or, or design. The most important part is before you even apply for any job, make sure you read the job requirements and make sure that whatever you include in your CV jives or would align with the requirement of the job. Uh, what happens now is that there's, there's some sort of algorithm in, in the job application. So th the system itself actually reads the, the CV. And this is for, for many uh, major companies now. Um, rarely that you will find some companies who still go through, you know, the hard copy of the CV and go, I mean, uh, do the, the shortlisting. Oftentimes, you would find a lot of companies that the system itself actually reads the CV and, and even screens the CV out, you know? So make sure that whatever you write in the CV actually is related with the position and, and the requirement of the position that you're applying for. Otherwise, it will go to waste. You know? If you don't read the job requirements very well and you didn't find that uh, you know, the job requirement really fits with whatever you, you uh, 
have written in your CV, then you're just wasting your time, you know, sending a lot of CVs to many companies and, and you will not get any chance at all. So that, that's uh, from my side. So you're so saying think, that dapat nagmamatch yung keyword of the job description and also your CV. Correct, correct. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the keywords are very important actually in the application process now, especially for uh, uh, companies who have uh, automated process in their application. I, I think it's almost it's almost important to match whatever the company is looking for, right? When you write that CV. So it's really prudent to do a tailored CV, I think, for each job. Do you agree with that? For each job application, the CV has to be tailored. So it cannot yes. be a one-size-fits-all that I do one CV and I send it to 50 people to 100, uh, you know, 100 companies or something. So it's it's important to tailor that CV, right? Correct. Correct. Sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I yeah I I think what you said, Jose, answers almost the the next question that I had. That what if a person cannot find vacancies that are related to what they all already are doing, you know, to to what occupation they had before. So you can look at the uh, other skills that you have or other passions that you might have. Main, do you want to add to that uh, discussion? Uh, no, I think I've mentioned earlier about looking at your many possible selves. Okay. I think this is a time that we, you know, time for introspection and think, okay, if we're not getting that job that we wanted to get, or if we're not getting any offers, then maybe I could do something else. And there mm -hmm. are a lot of options out there. So, I mean, some of them may be realistic, but some of them also may not be realistic. So that just, mm -hmm. you just need to balance that. Um, yeah, and there's no, it's not a, sh there's no shame in changing uh, careers, especially with how coronavirus, how the pandemic has changed mm -hmm. everything now. So re re uh, employers will not look at you and say, hmm, so you've changed from this to this. It's, you know, it's, it's not, yeah, it doesn't count anymore. I myself have changed from being a systems consultant to an HR person because I, I knew that I actually like people related um, things. So. So maybe this could be also a good opportunity to to pivot, right, career-wise. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And Al it's Al Alwi has mentioned that even if you yeah. have a job right now and then you see this opportunity to freelance or or do remote work, why not? We gotta hustle, right? Yeah. Definitely. And yeah. also, so, ano, um, sana naman people don't send their CVs in an open word document. Please send it in PDF. <laughs> <laughs> It leads to my, my next question. Um, this question is not to shame or make fun of, of those applicants, but also it's kind of like a learning curve also for all of us. As HR professionals, what are your biggest pet peeves in, when it comes to like CVs or applicants? Just so people can also avoid that. Uh, yeah, so what you just talked about, <laughs> Word document, that's a very rookie mistake. Um, please don't put selfies, pictures on your CVs. I know that in this region, <laughs> companies, uh, some companies are requiring photos, right? And that's okay. You can put your photo, but just be careful of the photo that you put on there. Um, yeah, so avoid super long CVs because when as recruiters, uh, we actually, when we're shortlisting, it's, you might think that we're looking for like the key thing. What we're actually doing is shortlisting. Basically, we get rid of the things of the CVs that we know are actually not um, matching the profile that we're looking for. So you need to make sure that you, you know, that you have a clear CV and not put a novel <laughs> on your CV. What about you, Jose? Do you have other um, pet peeves that you can add? Definitely. Um, one, one information that I would like to share uh, as a recruiter, I mean, a recruiter actually only spends five to 10 seconds for each CV, yeah. specifically for, you know, for big companies where you have thousands of applications. So, I mean, unless you see right away within that five or 10 seconds, the words that you're looking you know, in, in an application, then you don't spend, actually. Then, alas, you know, you're, you're out uh, of that yeah. uh, process. So uh, that, that's why it's very important that uh, you make sure that you go through first any job that you're applying and make sure that your CV is really matching to that position that you're applying for. Otherwise, it, it will just go to waste. 
is it rude to be sending CVs uh, directly via LinkedIn? Would you advise people, for example, if I'm uh, hunting for a job, is it okay mm -hmm. for me to be sending my CV to HR managers over on LinkedIn? What do you think about that? Uh, so, no, I don't think that it's a rude thing to do, but it's not productive. Uh, if And also, um, thanks for reminding me but networking is actually one of the best things that you could do right now and uh, most jobs right globally are now um filled because of networking so when you're networking you have to do it in a tactical manner kind of like face by face so say for example um uh, I, you know, there's a job that I'd like to apply for and my friend is actually working for that company and they have a job. So I'll just go and say hi to my friend first and see if they respond. And then, you know, if they respond, then I, you know, go back and tell them that, okay, fine, there's this opportunity and uh, just be real on your situation right now. I think everyone in the world <laughs> would know that we are, you know, we're all looking for jobs. And then that's when, that's the time that you, you know, send your CV, but just sending your CV on LinkedIn directly, I don't think is, is that effective. What about this thing that um, some Filipinos uh, sometimes do that they go directly to the offices and then they submit CVs to uh, the reception area. Exactly. Is that productive? Yeah. They apply without yeah, any appointment. It's not safe right now. <laughs> For but sure. It's, um, yeah. Um, so I do. I do make as an HR professional. I do make the effort actually to go through those CVs that I receive um, because I know that they've done all the effort to go to my companies. I cannot guarantee that it's always effective, um, you know. But uh, I do try to. But I know for a fact that a lot of HR. Uh, professionals out there just ignore those CVs as well. Um, so I cannot guarantee that it's the most effective way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jose, any comments yeah. on that? De definitely. I mean, uh, if if we find a CV, again, we also go through it. I mean, um, we cannot avoid the uh, people uh, submitting a hard copy of the CV. So uh, we, we also go through the CV. If we find them um, quite interesting, we uh, right away call them and tell them to apply to our uh, career site or uh, send their CV, um, I mean, um, through email or, or uh, online. So um, otherwise, um, uh, if, if you feel you don't have uh, some sort of experience that would really match that company you're applying for, I mean, uh, again, <laughs> it's, it's just a waste of time even, um, you know, dropping your CV um, uh, to the reception or to you know, to the company. One thing that I also wanted to ask you guys, if, if I may shift to the a bit of the darker side of the discussion, because <laughs> a lot of my friends also, like there, there are a lot of FB groups, diba? like Jose, you also mentioned there, this Filipino group of job seekers. Um, right now that because of desperation, the salary offers are just so low. And yeah. parang like some Filipinos or even not just Filipinos are being taken advantage of because out of desperation they would you know like get the job. W what's your take on this? Yeah, so you don't want to be applying for those companies. So if uh, you know that the low salary is coming from a place of the company not doing so well. And so, you know, you need to be empathetic with the company as well. But if you know if it's coming from a place of they're just taking advantage of the situation, you don't want to be associated with that kind of company. How about you, Hussa? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, um, any company that is, um, uh, you know, trying to... Um, uh, exact any any sort of um, money or or any sort of favor from uh, any candidate uh, for us definitely it's a no, and uh, I've been to so, so many um, I've worked with with some agencies also um, who who's actually main uh, principle in in, in uh, our work is never never to charge anything to uh, people so for us uh, that's a really uh, big no um, to to take advantage of this uh, kind of situation. Yeah, I have um, I have a question here from Albert Alba. He's, he's asking, 
how much of our resource is linked in for recruiters? What about other job sites? What are the most commonly used job sites? Can you guys recommend? Okay, definitely um, uh, LinkedIn would be one of them because I mean, you have you have uh, millions of um, people that you can easily just uh, tap uh, in LinkedIn. Uh, but uh, first, of course, you, you need to have a, a recruiter um, license also uh, to uh, in order to uh, have access to, uh, you know, to all the profiles and LinkedIn. That's number one. Um, there are also other um, uh, job sites that uh, more or less related to the industry that we're, we're, uh, we're having. Uh, again, this may depend on um, uh, which industry you may be in, but here in UAE, of course, there's uh, Buy.com, there's uh, Golf Talent. Uh, Monster, I could say, is also widely used here, but um, they're mainly catering to um, you know Indians or other nationalities, but... Um, also widely used. Uh, so in terms of the UAE population, I guess those, those three uh, major um, uh, job portals uh, are, are some of the best, um, you know, resource uh, for application here. Main, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, so I've mentioned something about being your own PR firm um, earlier. And so I have a few tips regarding that. And so um, the first tip is expand your sphere of influence. So LinkedIn um, and all of these monster and invite, um, uh, Jose, they're, they're definitely very helpful. But it also helps for, you know, uh, maybe stepping back and do it simpler as well and just to uh, expand your sorry expand your influence on linkedin even facebook even um, any type of social media platform because um again um you look at situations for example if you know that your high school friend uh that you just connected on facebook is actually working for this company or linkedin is working for the for this company so that's an opportunity right there um another another advice is uh to make sure that you secure your brand okay and uh this is this is i think i was uh, talking about the a personal brand you know so um make sure that you before you go out there and promote your your you know yourself or your skills uh, or employability make sure that you have the right content okay um so you have to be very careful as well in how you portray yourself um uh, it, gone were the days when you would say oh internet lang yan it doesn't represent the real me you know employers google you and you guys know that already right oh yes <laughs> we yeah. google everyone so we're googling everyone for obviously criminal offense that they may have done in the past and also for their fit in the culture and maybe you can also gauge a little bit on the emotional intelligence when you google someone and see what's you know coming up um in their um in their profile um yeah. keep current do, with industry do you, at, do, you, do you look at the social media platforms of the applicants instagram of course Facebook. we do that's one of the unconventional tool but yes as recruiters we also do so I think let, yeah, <laughs> we look for the red flags. Let, let, let us just reiterate that point, guys. Having a social platform is actually an opportunity because you can reach out to people out there. But the thing is, you have to use it wisely. So if your social media, if your Facebook or Instagram or whatever, is just full of rants, <laughs> you know, if you're just ranting on your social media, how are you going to apply for a job? Because you're going to be judged for that rant. So, dinisin po natin yung social media natin. If we want to land... Rants, right? I mean, like, you could be talking about, like, how you got laid off by your previous company. Yeah. yeah. Or talking Big about your ex-boss, right? Talking exactly. about your ex-boss, which, which I've seen with some people. So, that's a definite no-no. You're going to be judged for that. So, you know, make it work for yourself and uh, clean that up, right? Um, yeah, I think I before, yeah, we're, we're going to go into the next part of our, um, mm -hmm. our conversation, and that's going to be delving into freelancing. But before we do that, I just wanted to show a video of one of our contributors. And this is what we were talking about earlier. If you've lost your job and you've nowhere else to go, can you change into another, you know, into another occupation? And this guy, Chris Daimon, he, uh, you know, transformed from being a writer and researcher to a COVID nurse. So let's listen to what he has to say. 
Hi, my name is Chris Damon, and I used to work as a writer and researcher here in Dubai. I had the chance to uh, collaborate with people in the fashion industry like Michael Sinko, Gary Moriferos, Harvey Sennett, and then photographers like uh, Jeff Anno and Rosen Anton and many more. Also a contributor for Illustrado magazine and you can see me anywhere sometimes. One of those Filipinos who lost uh, a job because of the pandemic. But right now I'm working as a COVID-19 nurse here in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Of course my mother doesn't want me to continue this kind of job because it's so dangerous. It's a call of duty, a sworn call of duty. A big transition in my job as a researcher and a writer because this job is not very easy, I tell you. We lost frontliners in this uh, country. So what would me decide is that because my classmate and my friends told me that they wanted to uh, relax as well because it's really, really a very stressful job as a nurse in this kind of situation. I wanted to help my fellow nurses. So that made me decide uh, to come back as a nurse in this country. And I hope I have made my country proud. Wow, um, that, that's actually very powerful. So um, Chris used to be a writer researcher and after being laid off, um, you know, after this whole pandemic issue, he decided that he's going to be a COVID nurse um, for which he was originally trained for. I know it's not a decision for everybody, but, you know, I guess sometimes situations like this allow you to think about the bigger picture and uh, you know some people might be convinced to pivot into the medical industry where a lot of staff are still needed do you have any comment on that uh jose or main because he, he this guy transferred from being uh you know it's a totally different job joining uh, a totally different industry and i know it's very risky to join uh the medical uh field you know to, to become a frontliner but i guess there are some people who feel that uh, you know, they, they, they feel like they have to contribute to that cause. And, you know, at the same time, if you can earn a living doing that, any thoughts on the yeah. matter? That That is actually something that is wonderful. Um, you know, one thing that we tend to forget when we are job searching is our sense of purpose. Does this job actually serve my purpose in this world? So that's one question that you need to, you know, ask yourself. Am I making a positive difference in the world? Yeah, of course. So it's it's not for everybody, but you know, if you feel compelled, um, people are still. I mean, every country is still looking to buff up their frontliner force. So yes. that job is out there for anybody who yeah. wants to to participate. And we just like to greet Joseph Alcantara, Ben Lebig, Joseph in Cutbert, Jingai Dinsai, Leslie Fiestan from uh, Riyadh, Albert Alba. Yes, Ma Mom Yasmin Balahadia Cortez is watching us. Resty Lagare from Kuwait. Jason Roy Bukton, uh, Defani from Strawberry Nails. Of course, hi there. Michael Cinco is with us, Maria Aranda, Nina Peñalosa Carpio, and Susan Francisco. Now, let me ask about freelancing and let me direct this question to Jose. Jose, is there ever a time that you would recommend to anybody asking you for advice that you might as well go into freelancing and you know, uh, look beyond that uh, full-time job? Again, I have spoken of, uh, you know, your alternate passion um, at, at this uh, current situation. I think, you know, um, it, I mean, it doesn't hurt if you have one or two uh, other jobs. The, uh, the most important thing there is that uh, you know that uh, you can manage your time. Uh, second is it, it doesn't have any conflict with um, your company or with the business that you are having uh, or you are in right now. So um, there are, of course, uh, some advantages and disadvantages of doing uh, such. But uh, if you have the capability and resources uh, to pursue freelance or consultancy work, while at the same time having a, um, a permanent uh, job, then uh, why not? Um, specifically now, we're talking uh, about you know, a lot of costs involved in paying our health insurance, uh, rent, children's education. So um, uh, definitely, as long as there's no conflict of interest, um, and uh, if it's something that would really um, uh, satisfy your passion and enjoyment, 
uh, and, and your time permits so that uh, it will not also clash with your other work, then definitely. I mean, UAE is also um, actually encouraging uh, part-time jobs, so it's, it's not an issue here. So uh, if you can find uh, something very fruitful and financially um, also um, uh, gain, uh, that, that would gain, uh, you know, good uh, financial, um, uh, at least a backup uh, for your uh, uh, current job, then go for it. Super. Main, anything to add to there? Well, would you advise anybody to go for freelance? Look, if your resources, uh, I like doing mind mapping. Okay, so if there's a freelance option that you might want to go to, do a mind map. Uh, look at your resources. Can you actually afford to do freelance? And look at the, um, the probability of success. If you think that you would be more successful in doing freelance, go for it. It's not frowned upon. It's, you know, as I think in the past, uh, it was a kind of not, not really frowned upon, but we don't look at you differently because you chose to, you know, do freelance or uh, candidates who want to go back to the corporate world. If they've done freelance before, it's only a plus. Mm -hmm. Alwi, do you want to say uh, something before we, um, you know, show our video on how to earn money online these days? Well, yeah, I, I just wanted to share. I mean, I noticed because there are a lot of people in the creative industry are watching now. So I just wanted to share what I have been noticing and what I know my friends are doing from the industry. For example, I have photographer friends who are now selling digital prints of their previous works. You know, it can be like their street journalism, it can be um, some concert photos that they took or portraits that they've taken before. So they're now selling the digital prints of that. Um, I also have friends who are digital artists who are creating digital arts. Um, they also set up a, a separate Facebook, uh, Facebook and Instagram pages for their arts and they're selling um, these for digital prints. So, marami, actually, but then like, again, um, just like the point of main earlier, you're your own PR person. Like, you need to be able to sell yourself just so people will believe in you. And it goes the same with the work, uh, the work that you do. So you need to be able to promote you and your work, even on your own platforms. Definitely. Uh, it's That's a great point. And we're going to be hearing from uh, very experienced freelancers who have been freelancing through the years and who have actually made a living, you know, becoming uh, full-time freelancers. But before that, we'll play a video showing you ways to earn money online. So do watch this. Well, so there are so many ways of earning money online and, you know, it can be anything, basically, whatever your skills are. So it can be in the areas of writing, content creation, uh, social media, marketing, of course, technical web development and all that, financial, doing trading, education. You can teach, uh, you know, just using an online platform or tutor or do consulting. 
Of course, you can be a blogger and monetize your own platforms if you already have that. And then some people are also making money out of selling things online, like they're selling things on eBay or the Bizzel. You know, it's it's called uh, selling or arbitrage. Some people even make their own websites doing drop shipping. And of course, general skills, you can work as a virtual assistant, uh, you know, somebody who does web research uh, or film forms for different types of services and, and do paid surveys. So there are so many ways of earning money online. We're going to share all these details with you guys later on and also the tips from uh, Jose and Maine in a uh, proper uh, you know, document that we will be publishing in our website, illustradolife.com, yeah? But uh, yeah, before we um, continue and talk about uh, and, and present our freelancers who have a lot of experience in that field, let me just ask one question here from um, Art Popo in Los Baños. Uh, Art is asking, there are companies whose CEOs have the intuition of knowing the right candidate when they conduct a face-to-face -face interview. Will online video interview have the same effectiveness? So can you actually feel that sort of um, you know, intuition when you do online interviews? What guys? Maine, do you wanna say something there? Yeah, it doesn't really make a difference for me. I mean, um, I mean, obviously, I think when when I'm interviewing people um, online or via video, um, I think I have that understanding that sometimes there might be a bit of technical, you know, uh, technical uh, limits or te technical limitations, but it doesn't really uh, change, you know, how you are, you know, how, how you can express yourself or how you're being perceived as a person with the online videos. And there are a lot of, yes, he, he is right there. Um, there are a lot of CEOs out there who's uh, who are very good who have the you know in 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 it intuition in them to hire the right people so on uh, online interviews are just as good um I've, before i mean sorry apart from the technical limitations yes they are as good mm -hmm. Jose, we don't have thoughts? a choice now too <laughs> we don't have a choice right Jose, any <laughs> thoughts on the matter i i, Jose, I, I yeah. believe um what i believe is that if if you have you know, a, a strong HR um, uh, interview structure, uh, specifically if it's based on a competency-based uh, interview uh, process that you're using and you have uh, prepared the right questions or uh, people in the panel are fully aware about how the, um, the structure and the, uh, the uh, interview selection process uh, is supposed to be done, then I, I think it doesn't matter. Again, like what main uh, as already mentioned, uh, sometimes all about the technical uh, issues that we're facing, but uh, the difference between um, interviewing, selecting someone face-to-face uh, -face and, and uh, virtual, uh, the only, I think, additional to that is um, sometimes uh, virtual could be, um, I mean, in, in my personal experience, uh, is sometimes um, uh, a bit uh, more pressured uh, for some candidates, like uh, in our case, uh, most of the people are available most of the time because we're just doing it uh, virtual. So I like before that you need to, you know, get some people physically, but now because uh, virtually most of the people, so we can have as many people who are actually attending the interviews and uh, that gives an additional, uh, you know, stress or pressure to the, uh, to the candidates. But uh, again, if uh, the interview is done in a very structured way, then definitely there's no issue on that. More, more work hours for you, Jose. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we're going to be sharing some insights from our freelancer friends. First of all, we have Elaine Fatima, who's based in Abu Dhabi, and Anna Lorraine Centeno, based in Toronto, Canada. Let's watch this. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I'm a full-time freelance makeup artist, photographer, and marketing consultant for content creation based in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Honestly, it took me about six years of the cutthroat corporate world to realize that what I love to do could be a career. So I opted out and I jumped into the freelancing boat. So to those of you thinking about going freelancing full time, it is true that freelancing can be an attractive alternative to the corporate nine to five, giving you more freedom to choose what you'd want to do and practically be your own boss. So with that said, there is no easy transition from being someone else's employee to running your own business successfully. 
you need to make sure you know what you're hoping to get out of freelancing before you put in all the hard work to make it happen. Define what you want to offer and what your business model is going to be and be disciplined about it when carving out your career path. Is freelancing enough to make a living? It solely depends on how you make it work. Freelancing is constantly changing. Rates go up and down and you have to keep up with industry trends to know if there is a market for your services. Initially, it would be tough to kickstart your business, but it's important to target an ideal monthly budget for when you do get the ball rolling and have some savings at hand before you begin. Apart from the market rates and the setup fees, you can definitely make a living if you know how to market yourself effectively. And I cannot stress on this enough, establish good relationships. That is key and it definitely goes a long way. However, this pandemic has affected freelancers globally and the fact that non-essential workplaces have been closed, it has made it nearly impossible for freelancers to find work and earn an income. So one word of advice is, adjust your hustle check in with yourself about what needs attention if not for client work because now is a good time for planning personal growth and strengthening relationships in this unexpected downtime be mindful if you need to pause i mean it's instinct to be productive but this might be a good time to make room for self-care, especially if you've been working like crazy before the crisis. So as a freelancer, it's okay to focus more on being than, be than doing right now. Hi, my name is Lorraine. I'm a freelance writer, um, editor, and digital media manager here in um, Toronto. Um, I moved here late last year and I've been writing for um, four, four media companies here in Canada and I do social media and digital media management for a company here in Toronto. Um, is freelancing enough to earn proper livelihood? Yes. Um, I remember even back home in the Philippines, I remember after quitting my job um, in the university after that I remember earning um, as much as I was earning when I was working full-time even more um, especially now because you have like the internet and you have sites where you can get projects from abroad so you're not limited to your like area or your country only you can get like clients from the States from Australia from other countries so it's easier to do freelance now um, tips for others, I think you need to really manage your time well and to really take uh, the project seriously because um, if you're doing a freelance, you're as good as your last um, project. So if you, if, you, if you miss up, they won't hire you again. Yes, baby. And yeah, you have to manage your time well and you have to discipline yourself because as you've seen, um, there are many distractions at home. If you're going to work from home and do this, um, you have to have a lot of self-discipline and you have to manage your time well. Because the, when you do freelance, the more you work, the more you earn. And that's also a good thing because um, if you're doing freelance, if you let's say you need more money and you're trying to save up for something, you can just um, take in more, take in more projects. Um, but if you want to like spend more time with your family, you can control the workload too. You can stop taking projects or you can limit the projects for this month. That way you can like spend more time with your family. Let's say you want to go on vacation. So yeah, that's a good thing about freelancing. Um, in terms of payment, yeah, it's you can you can earn a livelihood. Even here in Toronto where where um, everything is very expensive, but it's okay, yeah. Um, we, 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 we earn okay, um, considering my children's very, uh, so but ang ating yung mga yan magastos. Kaya naman, yeah, you can, you can do it. As long as you work hard and you, yeah, you manage your time. 
And in terms of payment, it's it's I what I liked about freelancing here in um, Canada is they're very um, they have a system. They, we have contracts, and um, it's automated. Everything is automated. You get paid like twice a month, and they have software that they use. The software automatically like compiles everything that you've done for the company, and then you see how much you're going to get paid, and then it automatically sends the money out to you and then it will generate an invoice so it's very easy yes, maybe it's very easy and convenient that's that's what i noticed here in canada so yeah i think that's it all right so we have full-time freelancers elaine fatima from abu dhabi and anna lorraine santana from toronto and canada well this just goes to show you really i mean look at these ladies they're so multi-skilled like for example elaine is a makeup artist photographer and marketing consultant for content creation and mm -hmm. anna lorraine is doing writing editing and uh digital marketing management so it's really really important to acquire skills and you know get yourself trained right alvi especially at this time if you want to be a, a freelancer yeah and it's the best time to actually learn more things or improve on your exi uh, existing skills and for you to be act uh, for you to actually get more jobs in different industries definitely so if you want something you really have to go for it and you know you learn the ropes and do everything possible to put yourself in the situation where you can get jobs but Alwi, earlier you had a very interesting question. You said, what about people who don't have all these skills? You mga kababayan natin who are like, you know, um, really having a tough time right now and they're the lower skilled workers. What, what can they do? Jose, you were sharing some thoughts on this earlier. Yeah, I was um, actually talking, and we're talking about from the Abu Dhabi uh, part, and I'm sure uh, in, in Dubai and in other parts of UAE, there are also a lot of... Um, Filipino organizations out there, uh, like, of course, Sherpa is um, providing uh, a lot of this uh, soft skills uh, training uh, for um, many Filipinos who are um, distressed or even those uh, people who are not into HR. So um, I, I guess you just need to um, approach, you know, this uh, Filipino organizations who could be uh, relevant to um, your interest or uh, the kind of learning that you want. And I'm sure uh, this uh, Filipino groups or organizations would be uh, more than glad to, um, you know, uh, allow you to join this uh, kind of activities to learn uh, something or to learn more about um, uh, enhancing or, or building or further developing your skills and knowledge. Mm -hmm. May anything from your side on that one? Uh, no, so basically Jose has um, uh, said everything. So I, yeah, the thing that I can think of is look at your organizations. And I know that there are a lot of Filipino communities out here. So look to your community as well and look at any opportunities that might open up. Yeah, also, I, I think I want to add, uh, not all jobs um, are about writing or social media management or producing content. There are other jobs. I mean, look at the industries that are growing right now. Like for example, um, you know, in other countries, people are driving for Uber if they have a driver's license and they have a car or, um, you know, they, they join uh, shopping apps. So you, you become a, a shopper, you know, a professional yeah. shopper who does grocery shopping for the company. Mm -hmm. So there are those jobs. I, I think another area that's expanding right now, even in the UAE, is the cleaning sector. So, you know, professional cleaning, disinfection and all that for companies and, you know, corporate entities, that can also be somewhere that uh, lower skilled workers can look at. But of course, you have to, you know, um, upskill. Upskilling or reskilling yeah. is always important. So learn something, learn something new. Right, Alwi? That's a very good point. Um, just very quick, Lam. Because as the situation is ever changing, it's tough now, right? But businesses are also evolving. And when businesses evolve, it's also creating like job opportunities. Yes. You know, like um, for example, a, a lot of businesses now are investing on their e-commerce. They would need people to work on that. They would need photographers to take photos of their products or graphic artists who can create their designs or, you know, like because businesses are also 
trying to offer services that will fit the current market. So I, I think that's one good uh, what this another thing that we can also look at, like how businesses are evolving. So we should be mm-hmm. on the lookout for for oh, this. Oh yeah. Look yeah. around you guys, see what kind of opportunities there are, what businesses are growing, you know, what what businesses are doing well or are still open during this pandemic. And you know, you never know. You might have an opportunity there. So uh, now we're going to show uh, the rest of our full-time freelancers. We have Jay Beruzi Sneed, who is based in Liverpool in the UK. We have Christina Lenazo, who is based in Bataan in the Philippines. And of course, our friend Christina Bande in Dubai. Hi, my name is Jay. I am a full-time freelance voiceover artist and remote radio presenter. Um, I know that sounds really strange being a remote radio presenter, but I do radio shows for stations not necessarily in the same country as me. Uh, All you need to do that really is a microphone, headphones, laptop, and a decent internet connection. And my tips if you are looking to get into full-time freelancing is to keep going, you will be off to a slow start. Anything other than that is just pure luck. Uh, Keep building a clientele. Learn to do other things besides your first initial skill. So besides presenting and voice work, I also know how to produce, which brings in a fair bit of work as well. And it can be enough. You will work long hours. You will work holidays and weekends, but if you love what you do, you can't really call it work, can you? Hi, Christina here, and I'm a freelancer since 2010. I am a portrait photographer, and at the peak of my career, I joined commercial photography. So I was uh, involved with uh, mostly publishing houses, so a lot of my work are being published either on on the magazines, on the newspapers, and even online. And I used to run a lifestyle and tech blog and during this time I was able to develop some skills some additional skills like makeup artistry and styling and of course being a content creator when everything everyone is on stop right now because of the current situation there are no gatherings there are no events that means no work and no pay for me so I tried applying for a home-based job and I was able to make it and now I'm working full-time with them at the expense of my own house and my own time. So here are some tips for you if you want to go freelancing. Number one, commit to it. You need to be assertive. Freelancing is never easy. It's always hard. It is the same thing as starting a business. You need to give your time to see how it's gonna work. What I most love about freelancing, you are the master of your own world. You can be as anybody as you want to be, as long as you're skilled, you are equipped, knowledgeable, and professional. Somehow, there is a business waiting for you. Second, you need to study and upgrade. It's not about passion anymore. You need to be as competitive, as much as possible and the only way for you to go there is to learn how they do it be an innovator if you get stuck in one place make sure you have plan B and third the last one but not definitely not the list is investment some other people told me that I have invested too much on my equipment you know what don't let them tell you otherwise you bought it because you you know that it's going to be beneficial for you somehow. It was proven to me during this pandemic that I have everything that I need and I'm so thankful. The third question is, is freelancing enough to earn proper livelihood? I think this will depend on how an individual define enough and proper livelihood. For me, yes, it is enough. It works. I don't really look at money as the sole reason in making my life better, you know what I mean? As long as I live decently and can sometimes afford unimportant stuff, then I say I'm all good. 
Hi to all the viewers of Illustrato Talks. Um, yes, I am a freelancer. I am a freelance production manager and content writer. Um, I'm also handling sandbox creatives. Um, and uh, yes, um, it's so challenging now during COVID times to be a freelancer, to have your own little uh, startup. Um, but I guess uh, my advice would be to stay focused, um, keep work on, on your strengths, tsaka learn, keep learning, um, stay connected with, um, with your clients, with your network, um, and save because you know you never know how long this will be and for a freelancer talagang um, important to, to save uh, and to prepare for the rainy days. So I guess that's my advice. Uh, good luck to all of us. Well, that was very interesting. We had J. Beruzi Sneed from Liverpool, Christina Lenaza from Bataan, and Christina Bonta in Dubai. Again, the message is multi-skilling, you know, also building your network, building your relationship with uh, your, your clients, and always learning. Alwi, do you want to add anything to that? Well, I, I just wanted to greet um, people who are watching <laughs> right now. Take this time. <laughs> hello. For joining us. Um, hello to Eric Sanreco, Vicky Icodo Domingo, Rosal Antonia is also watching, Dea Paderes, Tina Yums. You know, like, this is so funny because, like, I first read it as Tina Yums. Like, oh, it's Tina Yums. Um, Christina Magallon is also watching Dal Francisco, Ryan Banks, and Jade De Leon. And also, um, as I said in the earlier part of this live stream, um, Radisson Blue is doing a thank you initiative to all the frontliners. They're offering 10 free staycations to our frontliners out there. So if you know anyone or if you are a frontliner yourself, just share your story on Instagram and Facebook, tag Radisson Blue Hotel Dubai Dare Creek, and you can get the chance to have the free staycation. Um, and these will be accepted until 31st of May. And of course, that's Sumi Bia promotion, right? And they're opening on the 22nd of May. Yeah. So maybe a promotion opening 22nd of May, birthday of my mom, advanced happy birthday. Um, they're offering a buy one, get one. So that's a two for one offer for their Korean barbecue and Japanese buffet. So that offer is $1.99 for two person and that's inclusive of soft beverages already. Super. I'm hungry now. <laughs> but anyway, just going back to our panelists today, thank you guys for being with us. What are your final tips for people who are looking for jobs right now? Let's just make a, you know, a, a summary and just have your quick tips on the issue. Uh, let's start with Maine. So for me, look at it from a personal and professional perspective. You know, I was talking about, um, you know, whatever it is in your power to control right now, you know, performing your job sell, job search and doing everything, you uh, know, enabling yourself to perform the job search. And from a, a professional perspective, um, um, I think just aim to be the agile employee that I was talking about. Uh, be your own PR firm. You know, um, we already talked about how to be one. And by the way, one last thing that I want to tell everyone, and this is quite powerful, is the fact that you can always ask for a LinkedIn recommend recommendation because as recruiters, when we see those, those are super plus points. So if you know that um, you've done a really good job and, um, you know, your colleague or ex-colleague appreciates that, don't, you know, don't be shy to ask for it. Okay. And uh, one last thing that I would like to talk about is please ignore the noise. Everything that's happening right now, it's just a noise, you know, it will pass. Uh, this has happened in the 20s. They've had, we had 1920s, we had Great Depression in 1920s. And look at us now, now we're going through a similar thing again. Just ignore the noise and uh, be the inborn optimist that we are. We're all Filipinos. That's very, that's very good. Yes, uh, Jose, what about you? Again, I, I would like to emphasize on being agile and resilient. Um, that's number one. And um, we cannot just be uh, complacent. Uh, much more, we cannot be careless at this current situation. 
uh, we, we have a very difficult situation. And after we come out with the COVID, I'm sure there's still a lot of uh, challenges, uh, not just individually, but as a nation or a company uh, to stand up once again and recover. I mean, that could be a very rhetoric you know, statement, but uh, we really need to learn from whatever experiences we had from this situation, financially, physically, mentally. And uh, of course, in terms of our career, um, there, we are given actually a huge opportunity to learn or enhance our skills. And, and uh, no one can say they don't have any gap. And um, uh, so this is very important that we, we actually make that realization of what sort of gaps do we have. And we need to invest uh, time uh, that we have to improve um, such gaps, of course, ourselves. Uh, avoid muna yung too much politics, chismes, spreading fake news, so whatsoever. But I think that's a very important uh, part of what we need to do right now. Uh, building from our gaps and try to uh, learn uh, what we can actually uh, and how we can actually fill those gaps. And in the end, you will you will come out with uh, you know a much stronger person. Okay, so that's that's from my side. Well, thank you very much, Jose and Maine. Your insights were so, so useful today. Um, I would like to ask the two of you, please, if people have any questions in our comment section, do pitch in and, uh, you know, um, help us answer these people. And as we have promised, we will be putting all the details that we have discussed today in a detailed article so you guys can share the information and, uh, you know, you can benefit from it. Um, any parting words, Alwi, before we wrap this up? For me, very simple. Um, before anyone can believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. Um, reassess. There are so many things you, that you are capable of, and that's where you start. And then when you're applying for a job, maybe start targeting also your dream companies that you want to work for. They would have their career section in their websites, and just see like um, what you can do about that and also I'd, I'd like to take this moment to ask people if you know any links that can help our viewers or other our fellow Filipinos yeah. put it in the comment section so yeah, yeah to help each we'll other send out. that over yeah sure yes please do so we'll share information so that everybody can benefit so thank you all for joining us today thank you for the wonderful discussion and you know from me don't be sad. Don't be afraid. There is hope out there. It's not all doom and gloom, like Maine said. There are lots of jobs. There are people who are hiring. There are companies that are hiring right now. Do not lose hope. Work on yourselves. Work on your skills. Take care of yourselves. Use your social media platforms properly and effectively to your own advantage. And, you know, let's get this job done, guys. You're going to yeah. get those opportunities. <laughs> Don't lose hope. Just work on it. And uh, from us here at Illustrado, Illustrado Talks, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Maine, Jose, and Al. We will see you again soon. Bye, thank guys. You so much. Bye. 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 And good luck.